All right, today's lesson is going to be frustrating for some students. I will tell you why it's frustrating, and then you can kind of choose not to be one of those students. One of the reasons people have issues with this is because some students think that long processes are stupid. Now, I'm just using a cheap um, adjective here, a cheap descriptor, but in the most part, they just think that long processes don't belong in anything. Other students believe that if the work is repetitive, that means that you have to do something again, and then do it again, and then do it again. That's stupid. And then other students think that if you have a long series of basic steps, that is time consuming and of course that it's stupid so uh, algebra should not be your issue with this section intelligence should not be your issue with this section uh, you will have to slow down your brain and just follow the steps but if you have issues in this section it's mostly because you don't have the patience uh, trust me when I say I felt the same way as you did when I first learned it thinking why do I have to do that and then do that and then do that so it's understandable but I'm just telling you ahead of time that there are no excuses. Every teacher, everybody who has been through algebra has had to go through this, so it's your turn. Uh, when something varies directly with something else, it means that there is a constant value that can be used to anticipate other situations. Um, the general form of direct variation is y equals kx, where k represents what we call the constant of variation. It's kind of like a um, cheap thing that they use k a lot in math as the constant. I don't know if they want to use k for constant and they can't spell, but Again, K usually represents constant in math. But what the constant is, is going to say that in a certain situation, the, the number that relates to them is going to be K. In algebra, you'll see it directly, or you'll see it as follows. Uh, if you were to see it on a SAT or a map question or anything like that, it would say something about the number of people varies directly with the number of hours. And here's all you have to do using that general formula, Y equals KX, just use more um, familiar variables here number of people varies directly with the number of hours I would say people would be a key word there hours would be a key word there and again it varies directly so you would put people varies directly with hours so P equals KH again P would represent people H would represent hours and of course K represents your whatever the constant is in that situation but that would be your direct variation equation you could see something like the weight of the moon the weight on the moon varies directly with your weight on earth which again looking at things here uh, moon would be an important word there earth would be an important word there so you would put m equals k times e again the moon's weight and the earth's weight are connected by some sort of a constant and that is pretty much your uh, direct variation equation we just make it general y equals kx most of the time but if you ever see the phrase what you'll do is you'll use a general a formula that's more realistic for you and then that'll help you solve it again that is a general format uh, that you need to know and honestly this is where two groups of students separate now that you know what direct variation is or at least have seen it this is where some of you are going to say this is not something I want to do and so you'll be uh, glad to take an F or a low grade on your quiz and others of you will put the work in and you'll get an A or B because it's really not that hard to do um, essential question what is the best my best explanation on why direct variation is an important process for you to learn um, in order to pass higher level math classes you need to learn how to properly execute tedious processes what that means is as you go higher in math and it's not that it's always easy but as you go higher in math the material doesn't become more impossible it just gets more and more steps and unless you have the um, organization to to execute those steps then you're not going to be able to make it in higher math. Most people who have issues in higher level math, it doesn't have so much to do with the fact that they're not good with multiplication tables or they're not perfect at solving because at some point you just learn how to do it. It's because whenever they get a process that's five or six steps long, they have not learned how to do a five or six step process and haven't ever accepted it and so they can't do it. So pretty much this represents a low level process that's going to give you a skill set for the next one so if you learn how to do this process and that's the importance of this if you learn how to do this process which is kind of random and and you know you'll think it's silly but it's a process that you have to know from the top of your head that you have to study into your brain and once you can do it then you know that the next time you see a long process you just got to kind of step in there with the same mind frame and really it's just about your frame of mind it's not about your algebra skill it's about how you view it all right. So your job is simple. I put that in quotes because it is easy, but it's not easy for everybody. Your first step is to use algebra to find the value of K, which means we have that constant of variation. And then the second thing we want to do is find the value of X or Y. Now, of course, there's two or three steps to do that. There's another two or three steps to do that. And that is where the process gets long. But as long as you understand that this is your overall job, 
uh, if you use that as your study guide or use that as your your rule of what direct variation is I think you'll be fine but again the necessity of two jobs is where people fall short um, we've come to believe that once we find the answer that at least we found out that X is this or Y is that or K is that that we're supposed to finish and that's not true in this lesson and it's going to be less true as we continue to go through the algebra so let's look at some examples and then move on but um, again just remember this process is not really that bad it's just it's actually just a first glimpse at you know some of the higher level stuff you're gonna to have to be able to do it's gonna say in all these questions suppose y varies directly with x write a direct variation equation that relates x and y then find the value of y well we won't do that I think your notes say something about find the uh, indicated value of y but either way here we go so once it says y varies directly with x that means we put y equals kx and you're gonna to have to actually write all these steps on your computer so you might want to write them and keep them in mind because I need to make sure you at least have it down whether you don't like it or do like it I need to at least prove that you you know have done enough the second thing you're gonna do is substitute what you know kinda of like what we did in chapter 4 so we're gonna put negative 10 in for y we're gonna bring down our k we're gonna put 2 in for x we are going to solve for k because remember our first job is to find k so we divide by 2 we divide by 2 we get negative 5 for k that means that in this situation our constant of variation is 5 it means now we take this negative 5 and we plug it in for k so the reason we found k was so that we could take it from a general formula to a formula with a actual constant and then the next thing you do is you actually plug in what you have which is y equals negative 5 times 13 which when you do your work would make it I'm sorry yeah would make it negative 65 each of these steps is going to be done on your computer so again you're gonna to have to put your y equals kx you won't need to show the divided by two part because I'm I'm leaving that to you but you will have to put whatever k equals in here then you have to go up and write your equation and then you have to substitute your x and then you have to actually give the answer but again once you get to it you'll see it's not that bad it's just me making sure that you actually do all those steps to get the credit so that if you say you don't understand after you do all that work I know it's somewhere else not in the fact that you are just being lazy or haven't got the fundamentals but that's all you have to do first job remember was to find K there you go second job was to use K to find whatever was missing that's it B again Y varies directly so we start with Y equals K X we then plug in what we have which is 5 equals K times in this case again it's 2 so now we find K by dividing by 2 we get the answer of 5 over 2 equals K yes fractions exist once we have this k we then plug it into the original formula which is y equals 5 over 2x that is the direct or the, the formula there or the equation and then we take 11 and plug it in which means that you end up with negative 55 over 2 just so you know you've been, probably been using your calculators for a while whenever you multiply a whole number by a fraction you pretty much just multiply it to the top leave the bottom alone and simplify if possible 55 over 2 is as far as you can go that is your final answer again we did the job to find K we plugged in K we used K to find Y that is all alright C the only thing they're gonna do is give you an ugly number but so be it here we go we have a various directly Y equals KX sorry not KK kx so then we substitute things in we get seven and one half equals k times three what I'm gonna do because seven and one half and it just so happens is not one of those repeating decimals it's just seven point five to me and that's how I would do it because typing seven and a half and doing all that work is kinda long so I'm just gonna do seven over seven point five equals k, over k times three then divide by three and we'll figure out what this is it's 2.5 I guess that makes sense because a quarter broken into three parts would be a, I'm sorry 75 cents broken into three parts would be a quarter so either way 2.5 or two and a half is what we would want to do because it's a fraction but for right now we have a workable number we're going to do 2.5 so I'm going to put y equals 2.5 x if they wanted the actual answer it'd be two and a half x but for the work of what we're doing we're going to do 2.5 we'll then do substitute my x 2.5 times negative 7 and that gives me negative 17.5 or again y is equal to negative 17 
and one half because you want your original you want your answer to match original format just like if they said what is the formula your formula would be y equals two and one half x which I don't know how you'd write that but however you'd write that so you didn't get the stuff mixed up but anyway that's the general idea of what's going on uh, your final thought I don't think it's on your paper but the key thing here is that patience and practice is going to make it very easy lack of patience and practice is going to make it nearly impossible you can't possibly get that stuff done and have a bad attitude about it or not feel like you're you know wasting your time or whatever happens uh, but just make your choice now uh, as I've kind of told you along the ways as your teacher I can't make any of those choices for you um, the times when I tell you or your teacher might tell you that you need to think about dropping or whatever it might be it's not that we want you to drop it's that your habits probably are not where they need to be and we know that if you don't do what you're supposed to do um, you're probably not going to make it and it's not again because we're mad at you it's because you honestly have to make the choice to be successful on your own that comes from you but other than that the math XL is waiting for you um, good luck